Did Elon Musk just suggest that your Tesla might have a basic level of consciousness built in? I think he did. Let's take a look. Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. I was going to do an episode today on the case against Tesla, but Elon Musk's overnight tweet made me want to do this episode instead, so I pushed that one back till tomorrow. But one of the cases against Tesla is the fact that they'll never solve full self-driving, so this tweet actually does play into that. But anyway, stay tuned for that video. I think it'll be really interesting to take a look at all of the arguments against Tesla succeeding. Really quickly, before I get to the main topic du jour, this is in regards to yesterday's video. You can catch that up here if you haven't seen it yet. Uh, about the cyber frunk on the cyber truck and I, I talked a lot about it so definitely watch that but Scott Walter before I even did my video said you know there looks like there could be a sub frunk underneath this in other words this area here that's very flat like a bench might just be something that's laying across something that's actually deeper so you might be able to get into that you know deeper maybe another half as much or something along those lines it's it's unclear because of course there's not a ridiculous amount of room down there but there certainly could be some room at least but anyway i at least wanted to mention the fact that there might be a sub frunk underneath that frunk with even more storage space and thanks to scott and others for pointing that out second i wanted to post the results of this poll there's four hours left still but whatever <laughs> it's close enough at this point by the time you see this i think the poll will be closed if not definitely go check it out i will leave a link in the description anyway i said i'm posting all of my youtube videos on x with about an hour delay because that first hour is super important to YouTube. So I'm delaying things before I post on X to make sure that I get the maximum number of hits on that channel. Anyway, I asked the question of whether people watch my videos on X, on YouTube, or whichever they come across first. And really fascinatingly, I thought that YouTube was going to dominate this, but it's very, very even. I mean, we're looking at really approximately a third of each of those with whichever I see first actually winning out. Now, that's not a correct sampling of results because, of course, this doesn't take account of people who are on YouTube only. But for those who are on X and YouTube, this is really interesting. And, of course, the result of this is that I will continue to post full-length videos on X. And, of course, we will see how things progress in the future. I'll probably do this poll again in a month or two or something and just kind of see how the results jibe with this particular poll. And this post is near and dear to my heart and good to see Elon's response. Yu Liu said, we need to improve our search ability. Surprise that I have to use Google to find a post generated here. That is always what I have to do. I can search on Twitter. I can't find it. I go search on Google and it gives me the tweet or the post, excuse me, that this thing came from and then I'm able to go find it. And that's due to the ridiculously bad search on X. But the cool thing down here is that Elon said, we are working on semantic AI search. We'll show posts of X that match the meaning of your search, not just the text. This is fantastic news. I mean, search really, really, really needs to be upgraded on X. And of course, I'm not blaming Elon or the team. This is a holdover from Twitter from before he purchased the company. But this is something that's brutally important. And it's really cool to see that, of course, with Elon companies, they're not looking at catching up to other companies like Google, but they're looking at overstepping them. And by the way, if you haven't used perplexity.ai, I highly suggest you give it a try. It is a new AI-based search engine, and it is so much better than Google. It's amazing, and it gives you, it doesn't hallucinate, it gives you links to the source that it's getting its information from. So uh, this is not an advertisement. <laughs> I have nothing to do with Perplexity AI, except for the fact that I really think that they have an amazing product here. And that's exactly the kind of product that will kill Google uh, if Google doesn't do this themselves, right? They need, everybody needs to be doing AI-based search these days. And it's really good to see that X is doing that. But you can already go to perplexity.ai and you can get that today. So let's turn to FSD and AGI. Yesterday, Holmar's catalog posted, when Elon Musk first said that full self-driving would work even in San Francisco. I didn't believe him and quite frankly, I didn't either. Now my Tesla drives me around San Francisco routinely with just computer vision. That's an astounding achievement. Here's one hour of San Francisco driving from yesterday and I of course will leave a link to this in the description so you can check it out yourself. Highly recommend popping it down in the corner and putting it like 2x speed and just watching. It's very remarkable how good this is. And overnight, Elon Musk responded to this saying, I think we may have figured out some aspects of AGI or artificial general intelligence. The car has a mind, not an enormous mind, but a mind nonetheless. To which I replied, I've been saying this for a while now, and you can check out my videos on the topic if you don't believe me. I think full self-driving has a better chance of reaching AGI sooner than large language models. Interacting with humans in the physical world requires a solid mental model of other 
and the physical world. Throw a large language model into the mix <clears throat> and things get wild. And if you don't know, again, I've done a video on this before, multiple ones, but I'll put one up here. Large language model, it appears that they are throwing a large language model, either plugging it in on top of the architecture for full self-driving or potentially integrating it into the basic architecture of full self-driving. And that is going to be a huge step if and when that happens. I believe that might be as soon as version 12 of the software. So let's discuss this tweet just a little bit more. First of all, AGI, artificial general intelligence, I take very great pains to separate this from what I think people believe it is. What I think people believe AGI is, is AIA or an artificially intelligent agent. That is not the same thing. AGI is something that is generally good. It's good at doing multiple tasks. So a narrow AI might be really good at reading slides of people's biopsies and determining whether they have cancer or not, right? That's a narrow AI. A general AI is something that can not only read those slides, but also generate code for you and also write you some poetry or something, right? So that's where the large language models start to tend into that general AI ability. But very, very importantly, these AIs do not have agency. And what do I mean by that? Agency is like a human being. We get up in the morning and we have desires. We want to do things during the day, whether that's eat and go back to sleep or whether that's to go to work or whether it's to you know solve cancer or something like that. We have motivations. We do things, shoot a video, for example. These things make us agents in our world. We have desires. We have motivation to do something. AGI does not have that, at least the way that I differentiate it from AIA. So what does that mean? That means like a large language model will sit there forever, right? You open the chat GPT window and it just sits there waiting for you to give it a prompt. It doesn't do anything until you say, please answer me this question or write me a poem or you know do something along those lines. Then it actually reacts. So that is only reactive and it will sit there forever waiting for you because it doesn't have any agency. Now, there are a lot of AI agents in the world. This is a very active area of research from OpenAI, of course, from DeepMind, from NVIDIA and on and on. So, so agency is definitely something that people are working on, but I just wanna be very careful to differentiate this from AGI. And of course, at present at least, Full self-driving falls under the AGI category. It does not have agency. If you get in the car and you don't press the accelerator or tell it where you want to go and engage full self-driving, the car will sit there forever. It will never do anything. So it doesn't have any agency on its own. It's only responding to human agency and our requests and our desires. So I want to be very clear about that. So what does Elon mean in that context about it having a mind, not an enormous mind, but a mind nonetheless? I think what he's talking about is that it has to have a world model. It has to have an understanding of the world in order to interact with the world. And again, let's back this up to large language models because I think a lot of people have a lot of experience with LLMs now from utilizing them. It's the kind of thing where that next word prediction, which seems very, very simple, actually requires a great deal of understanding of humanity and human language. So it's not just having a generalized knowledge of the next most likely word in English, but in order to make that reasonable for a sentence and for a response to the question that a human asks it, it needs to understand humanity, what we want, the likely thing that we're looking for, all of that kind of stuff. That requires a mental model. It's the same thing as if your teacher in middle school or high school or something says, write me an essay for this test. And you just read Lord of the Flies and the essay question is something about, tell me about the dangers of despotism as related in Lord of the Flies, right? Whatever, I don't know. But anyway, there is a question it's a prompt and you have to have an understanding of the novel you have to have an understanding of humanity right because you have to be able to understand what despotism is and how it's related in the book and you also have to have a model of your teacher does your teacher like really wild types of essays is your teacher very conservative and she wants things that are very evidence-based and very conservatively put in the essay or is she someone who just wants a crazy wild you know go off the rails and create an essay on the topic that's much more controversial. These are all things that are inputs to you as you sit down to write an essay like this. So this is something that ChatGPT and other large language models have. They have that ability, not specifically to us yet. That's something that's coming because I'm sure these models are going to be fine-tuned for each of us eventually. But right now, it has at least a general understanding of humans. And if you say, 
pretend to be this kind of a person or I want this sort of thing as part of the prompt, it will do a better job because it will understand who it is. In other words, if you say, I am a teacher that wants a really wild and controversial essay on this topic, here's the prompt, it's gonna give you something more wild. Whereas if you ask it to be very conservative and just write something that's you know completely inside the box essay, it will do a better job of that. So it's responding to you as a human. It's got a mental model of who you are as part of human humanity. And then if you give it a prompt, it will understand who you are as an individual as well to some extent. But the problem with large language models is they are restricted to language. And yes, I know multimodal stuff is coming, but that's still digital. The huge advantage and the reason why I say that full self-driving is going to get to AGI faster than large language models, at least probably, I think probably it will, is that it has to also interact with the physical world, which means it has to have a mental model of the physical world, the whole thing, gravity, roads, I mean, at least roads, trees, and things like that. Optimus obviously is going to have to have a more sophisticated mental model because it has to interact more carefully. But at the very basic level, it has to know what objects are, what solid objects are, what a road is, what background things are, what it means to drive, what it means to not hit things, to be safe. All of that kind of stuff has to be built into a world model. And that's the kind of thing that happens when you do end-to-end -end training, of course, is you get this kind of world model. That's the benefit of it. But also beyond that, it has to have a world model of human beings. It has to know that pedestrian over there is likely to step out in front of me, or that cyclist is likely to do this kind of thing, or that person on a motorcycle is likely to do this kind of thing, or that person in a car is likely to do this kind of a thing. It has to have not only an understanding of physical kinematics and all of that, but of human nature. It has to go like, oh, that person just got cut off. The likelihood goes way up that they're going to get pissed off and that they're going to do something stupid and flip somebody off or try to cut them off in turn or something, right? These are, these are sophisticated levels of mental models that have to happen in human beings, in us, as we watch other people driving around in order for us not to get potentially involved in an accident if we see something happen like that. Or or if we see a person at the edge of a pedestrian crosswalk and they haven't entered the crosswalk yet, is that person going to step out or not? Because if they're not, it's stupid for us to slow down and we're just gumming up traffic and wasting time and everything and energy. But if they are, we obviously have to slow down because they need to be protected. They're a vulnerable road user. And every time we drive, we have to make these decisions all the time. The physical world decisions, the kinematics, the physicality of movement decisions, and also the human decisions. We have to understand all of those things. What does that require? it requires a basic level of mind. I would hesitate to call it consciousness, but it is some sort of mental model and what Elon is calling a mind here. I think that that is justifiable. And I think especially when we see the significantly re-architected version 12 of this software, and hopefully we will get a lot more details about that at AI day three in maybe a month and a half, two months, something like that. Anyway, I think that when we get more information about this, it's going to be very obvious that we're looking at something that has at least some sort of rudimentary mind because it has to enable to drive effectively. You can't drive effectively without some sort of mental model of the world. And that is in many senses equivalent to a mind, if not a consciousness, at least a mind. So we're getting the building blocks of AGI here. Really, really fascinating stuff. And I think the reason people don't see this is because full self-driving doesn't respond to you in language. Large language models respond to you in language, which is how humans think of intelligence. We're like, wow, that person just told me some philosophy or something they're very, very smart. The car is very smart as well, but it doesn't talk to you. So if this large language model either gets tacked in on top of the basic model or becomes part of the basic model, you will eventually be able to talk to your car. And then I think people are going to be blown away. Maybe that's the chat GPT moment for full self-driving. People have been talking about what is the chat GPT moment when humanity overall sort of wakes up to the sophisticatedness of Tesla's full self-driving. And maybe that moment is when the large language model gets added to it. And this thing not only drives you around, but also talks to you as a conversational companion at the same time, then people might be blown away. I don't know if and when Tesla is going to work on that, because obviously that's, you know, lower priority than getting the driving correct. But it would be a really fascinating thing to be able to have your car drive you someplace, but also be your conversational companion, answer questions, write you some poetry about what it sees on the drive, maybe play 20 questions with you or something or I spy or whatever, right? It can even keep you entertained on the trip with basic games and things. So again, I think that Tesla is on the fast track to solving AGI, but of course I would be very interested to know what you all think about that. And also while you're at it, let me know about your opinion about watching videos on 
X versus YouTube because this will be on YouTube as well as X. So I will get a better sampling of results about that. So definitely let me know in the comments while you're down there. Please do remember to like the video so other people can find it. And of course, consider subscribing for more of this kind of content. And if you're watching this on X, then follow me on X. <laughs> you can do that as well. Speaking of, a huge shout out to my Patreon patrons, my YouTube channel members, and my X subscribers. Thank you all so much for supporting the channel in any way that you can. I truly do appreciate it. And of course, if you want to join the team, just check out the links in the description. And if you're interested in a whole bunch of really cool merch, check out our merch store. Link is in the description. We have TeslaBot t-shirts, the Tesla meme t-shirt, success is a possible outcome, 4680 battery cells. All of that stuff is on t-shirts, mugs, tumblers, and on and on. So check it out. And finally, don't forget we are both Tesla and Amazon affiliates. If you look in the description, you can see how going shopping for a new Tesla, a solar roof, a power wall, or anything on Amazon helps out the channel. In the meantime, I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.